The Kepler Space Telescope, which was launched on March 7, 2009 by NASA, is said to have discovered another amazing planet that seems to be better than our existing planet Earth. With this new discovery, is planet Earth on a verge of becoming non-existent? Or is it just another science discovery that's going to end up being just another scientific achievement? As NASA keeps updating us on the Kepler's telescope, whose mission was terminated years back, we sit and watch how this might affect our lives and space travel in the next few years. Stay with us until the end to unravel the facts behind the discovery of this new planet and its existence with other planets, and make sure to like and subscribe for more similar content. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which was named after astronomer Johannes Kepler, has discovered yet another interesting planet, an Earth-sized world that may be capable of supporting life. Its orbit is in its star's habitable zone, or Goldilocks zone, an area where the temperature is warm enough for water to condense on the surface, but not so cold that it would freeze up entirely. The Kepler Space Telescope mission, which was launched in 2009, was said to have shut down its operation due to the depletion of the telescope's reaction to control fuel in 2018. The initial planned lifetime was 3.5 years, but as a result of unexpected circumstances from the space and stars, it was extended. In 2012, the mission was expected to be extended until 2016, but on the 14th of July 2012, one of the spacecraft's four reaction wheels used for pointing the spacecraft stopped turning and completing the mission would only be possible if all other reaction wheels remained reliable. Moving to May 11, 2013, a second reaction wheel failed, disabling the collection of science data and threatening the continuation of the mission. On August 15, 2013, NASA announced that they'd given up trying to fix the two failed reaction wheels. This meant the current mission needed to be modified, but it did not necessarily mean that it was the end of the planet hunting. NASA had asked the space science community to propose alternative mission plans, potentially including an exoplanet search using the remaining two good reaction wheels and thrusters. And on November 18, 2013, the K2 Second Light proposal was reported. This would include utilizing the disabled Kepler in a way that could detect habitable planets around smaller, dimmer red dwarfs. And on May 16, 2014, an extension of K2 was approved. Years went by and they discovered a number of exoplanets, and eventually on October 30th, 2018, after the spacecraft ran out of fuel, NASA announced that the telescope would be shut down. The telescope was shut down the same day, bringing an end to its nine-year service. Kepler observed 530,506 stars and discovered 2,662 exoplanets over its lifetime. A newer NASA mission, Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite TESS, was launched in 2018, in continuing the search for exoplanets. TESS was used to search for exoplanets using the photometric method of transit. It uses a wide field of view lens, which is able to see the whole of the celestial body, and it makes it possible during subsequent follow-up to survey the size, mass, density, atmosphere, and orbit of the other planets. The Kepler telescope was built with the sole purpose of searching for other planetary bodies within our reach, these are unlike anything we've ever seen before in our planet, and most of them are significantly bigger than Earth. This persistence in the search is impressive, and Thomas Zerbiken, the Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington, responded in one of his interviews, This intriguing distant world gives us even greater hope that a second Earth lies amongst the stars, waiting to be found, and they are hopeful that as they continue the search, more exoplanets with such significant character will be discovered. Indeed, out of all the exoplanets found by Kepler, one planet has caught the attention of the astronomers, a planet which was named Kepler-1649c, and it's located 300 light years away from Earth, and it has an estimated temperature similar to that of Earth. Can this new discovery possibly be our new home? This Kepler Space Telescope was part of NASA's search finding program of relatively low-cost scientific missions. The telescope's construction and initial operation was managed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory with Ball Aerospace, which was responsible for developing the Kepler flight system. The spacecraft carried a single 95cm or 37-inch telescope that stared at the same patch of sky 105 square degrees. The original selected region was the constellation Cygnus, which was out of the plane of the solar system, to avoid fogging by light scattered by interplanetary dust or reflected by asteroids. Charge-coupled devices CCDs, 
operated as light sensors rather than as images in order to capture small changes in star brightness during the mission. The scene was off-focused so that each star covers several pixels. If the stars were not defocused, pixels on the CCDs will become saturated and reduce the precision of the observations. Stars fainter than the visual magnitude 14 were rejected. But this left more than 100,000 stars in the field of view. For stars with an Earth-like planet, scientists estimated that the probability of Kepler's observing that planet eclipsing its star was about 0.47%. Kepler 1649c, which was not only termed the best in terms of size and energy, but received from its stars significant correlations with that of Earth. It also provides an entirely new look at its home system. It was figured out through the transit method that for every four times the outer planet in the system orbits the host star, the inner planet orbits almost exactly nine times. And this fact shows how considerably that the system itself is extremely stable and possibly able to survive for a long time. It is 1.06 larger than the Earth, and the amount of starlight it receives from its host star, which is also a red dwarf, is 75% and shares similarity with our own planet. In NASA's previous studies, nearly perfect period ratios are often caused by a phenomenon called orbital resonance. But a 9 to 4 ratio strikes as unique and it's a unique chord among other planetary systems, and that's exactly what was recorded. An event called transit was what was used to detect that nearly perfected ratio, and this occurs when a planet passes in front of a star as viewed from Earth. And these events are seen as a small black dot creeping across the Sun, Venus, or Mercury blocks sunlight as the planet moves between the Sun and us. This is how Kepler's telescope found its planets, by searching for those tiny dips in the brightness of a star when a planet crosses in front of it. Once that was detected, they were then able to calculate the planet's orbital size from the period, how long it took for the planet to orbit around the star, and the mass of the star, using the popular Kepler's third law of planetary motion. And from the orbital size and temperature of the star, the planet's characteristics were discovered and hence the birth of a habitable area. Also, it is important that we note that all of these exoplanets identified by Kepler, only 16 of them lie within the habitable area and out of them. Some of the planets are tightly locked with their parent stars. That means one hemisphere of the planet faces the star and is not appropriate for life. Others are more of a smaller version of Neptune than Earth. With regards to all these similarities and differences, red dwarfs tend to be more active than sun-like stars, and thus the planets are exposed to more quantities of damaging ultraviolet radiation than we are used to on Earth. And because of this, the temperature of the surface might range between minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit and plus 1160 degrees Fahrenheit. That means that the planet might be colder or hotter than Earth's desert. Astronomers with their search still have found about five more planets similar to Earth that are suitable for habitation, and Kepler still continues to research for this. Of all the searches they have been undergoing, they have recorded non-habitable planets but interesting planets, which are the gas planet KOI 5AB hot planets. Although Kepler's telescope is not in operation anymore, these incredible discoveries predict a new future in which astronomers will use a new and developed telescope on the ground and in space to more deeply understand Kepler's numerous discoveries. And one telescope is already slated to go off in space this year. This would take a lot closer look into specific planets of interest and hopefully bring us closer to the answer to the ultimate question of if we are truly alone in the universe. With the Kepler telescope shut down, other telescopes have been launched and all to discover new exoplanets that might be similar to that of Earth. One such is NASA's TESS Space Telescope, which has captured more than 2,200 planets orbiting bright and nearby stars. The fascinating things and discoveries by Kepler cannot be overemphasized, as they are so powerful that, from its view up in space, could detect one person in a small town turning off a porch light at night. It also has the largest camera ever launched into space a 95 megapixel array of charged, coupled devices. With the possible assumption that planet Earth is not the only one filled with humans, could migration to another planet be happening sooner than we expected? Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!